Hi everyone, my name is Dr. Karen Hughes. I'm your friendly neighborhood chiropractor. I've been asked by the North York Senior Center at Hendon to put together a little video for you. I um, have been a regular presenter at the North York Senior Center on Hendon and they asked me to do something so that we could post it. I have been posting regular exercises online as well, but uh, today's presentation is uh, back pain prevention and management, which we thought might be good because everybody's sitting a little bit more. Right now, usually I do this presentation with um, visual aids and I talk to a crowd and it's probably a little bit more engaging that way. Um, because we're in the middle of the COVID lockdown, we're in my spare room. I chose this room because, um, well, number one, there's light in here <laughs> and the, the walls are blank and, and not distracting. And um, in some of the other rooms in my house, I've actually had to throw the breaker because we had some sputtering lights and I don't want anyone to come in and, and uh, fix that right now so we're walking around in the dark sometimes anyway so this is the best I can do please bear with me um, I'm gonna try and show you some exercises Rem I'm just gonna remind you I'm on a bed um, which is not ideal it's better to do many of these on the floor if you can get there but they can be done on the bed if you can't get to the floor anyway first we're gonna talk a little bit about lifting okay um, why do we talk about lifting at all mostly because back pain sucks and 85% of the people out there will have back pain at points, so let's try and avoid it. And one of the reasons that we get back pain is improper lifting or just lifting in general, or also right now, especially because of COVID, sitting. Sitting a lot on a couch, which isn't very supportive. Sitting at a, a desk chair or a, a dining room or kitchen table chair to do some of your correspondence and or work, um, which is very hard on the low back. Maybe I should do something about ergonomics in a future presentation. So um, some back pain lasts more than, than three months. We call that chronic back pain. And it's the sixth most burdensome health care uh, condition, or it was prior to this situation. So um, I don't know where it's going to fall later. Um, the cost of treatment of back pain is in the billions of dollars. And opioids have been previously recently prescribed for back pain. And then we, you know, the problem is that they don't work. And now we've run into this opioid crisis and you know trying to get away from that kind of prescription if i touch my face don't worry i just wash my hands okay um <laughs> finally the medical community is now starting to recommend chiropractors which is awesome i'm starting to get more and more referrals from medical doctors uh, for low back pain it's happened slowly i've been in practice almost 20 years 20 years this year and um you know it's been it's been growing slowly over time because there's more and more evidence that chiropractic works I knew, but anyway, sometimes the, the medical community takes a little while longer to come to these um, conclusions because they feel it's an alternative form of treatment, which it really isn't. It's just not drugs and surgery. Okay, so first I'm going to uh, teach you a little bit about lumbar spine anatomy. Now, I'm going to pick up my computer. This is my, um, this is my uh, presentation I've got right in front of me. I'm kind of looking at it. And here's my computer. Hopefully you can see it. Oh, it doesn't show up all that great. Let's see. No, it doesn't show up all that great. I wish I could project it, but I can't. Okay, so never mind that. Basically, in your lumbar spine, you have five vertebrae, okay? And between those vertebrae, the bones, there are discs. And also, not only do you have the discs, which is considered one joint, there's facet joints. Basically, they come together like this on either side of your side of your spinous process. There's discs, there's bones, there's ligaments and tendons, there's fascia. All of these things make up how we are held together and how we move and they can all be pain generators, okay? Um, so a disc problem you've probably heard about before, um, that's what we typically talk about as a herniated disc or a slipped disc. I'm not sure if you actually knew this, but discs don't actually slip. What happens is more of a squirt. So imagine your disc, if you're looking down on it this way, it looks more like a jelly donut than a solid piece of disc. Okay, on the, in the inside, in the center, there's this jelly, gel-like substance. On the outside, we have concentric rings of fibrocartilage tissue. And what happens is that the, the, the inside jelly sort of worms its way backwards when we're sitting a lot in flexion. So flexion is, is this, we're flexing forward, and the disc is actually going backwards towards our spine and spinal cord. So the best thing um, 
to do for that is to counterbalance flexion. That's going to be one of the first exercises that we teach you today. And that's why you're, so many people are having so many problems right now because we're all sitting too much and um, in the same spot. We're hardly moving even less than we did before. Um, so you could also, you could have pain from an, a disc issue, you could have joint pain, you can also have pain from soft tissue muscular problems or ligaments, and fascia as a pain generator. So you're like, wait a minute, what's, what's this fascia thing that you're speaking of? So fascia, if you've never heard the word before, if you've ever skinned a, a chicken, I'm sorry, I apologize to the, the um, vegetarians out there, but if you take a raw chicken and you're taking the skin off the chicken breast, you know you have that layer of, of muscle, the meat, the chicken breast, and then there's a layer of skin, and in between there's that saran wrappy layer, that's fascia. It covers everything in our bodies, all of our joints, muscles, uh, tendons, everything. It's a connective tissue and it helps things slide past each other easily. If there's any bleeding from a bruise, from surgery, from an injury, or inflammation, it causes that tissue to stick to each other, stick to itself, and cause like a, an adhesion or a, a small scar. And if it's not sliding properly, that can cause pain as well. And there's things that I do in the, in the, in the clinic, which we can't go to right now, um, <laughs> that can help with those things. Okay. So lifting, first first tip, don't hurt yourself in the first place. Same thing with sitting. Don't sit too long, don't hurt yourself in the first place. When you are lifting, keep the load close to your body, okay? Keep your low back in the neutral position, which means you should have a slight curve in your low back. Let's see if I can get up and show you that. So you shouldn't be too flexed forward and you shouldn't be too far backwards. Basically, you should have a nice neutral curve in your low back. Can you see that? Nice neutral curve in your low back. And that is very protective for you, okay? Um, brace. So that we're going to get to that later. I want you to brace, which mean, basically means hold yourself, stomach muscles tight, so that you are it's basically creating a natural back belt. And uh, balance the load well and use your knees instead of your hips um, and lower back to bend, okay? Um, <clears throat> some of these things I can't show you because they're on the computer screen. It doesn't work. That's okay. Posture, posture and health. We're finding more and more links between good posture or poor posture, especially with poor health. It's associated with higher um, mortality rates, higher increase issues with lung problems and heart disease. Um, specifically, easy to see things like tech neck. Have you heard of tech neck? When you're you're texting too much or you're looking too much at your computer screen and you, your neck is in flexion all the time. So what can we do about this? We can do some postural retraining exercises. We can avoid sitting for long periods of time and, uh, and different things that can help. Okay, so prevention, things that I wanted to show you, exercises, okay? If you go to my YouTube channel, all of these exercises are on there. So Dr. Karen Hudis on YouTube, you'll find my YouTube channel. This presentation will be there as well. But the ex exercises are called extensions, which I'll do first, and then a brace bird dog, resisted side step, and crunches, okay? So there's really six great exercises I give to most of my patients who have low back pain that are very helpful. So the first one is called extensions. This one is key. If you're sitting a lot and you have back pain, this is what I give to patients who have um, herniated disc issues, okay? And so the first thing I want you to do, I'm just gonna slide this over so you can see me a bit better. First thing I want you to do is just stand up, put your hands on your low back, and all you do is extend, okay? Don't look back with your head. You wanna keep your head and neck in neutral, and basically extend your back like this, and you're counterbalancing that flexion that you're doing all day by sitting, okay? All you gotta do is five or six of these in a row, takes about 20 seconds, and um, that's it. If you try to do that once an hour, if you're sitting all day, it's going to be very protective for you, okay? The other caveat I'm going to give you is if you're not sure about any of these exercises, you're not sure how to do them, you're not sure if they're right for you, they cause you pain, stop doing them, okay? Because I don't know, this is a video, I can't examine you, I don't know if they're right for you or your condition. Always ask your doctor, your practitioner, okay? The next one I'm going to show you is a brace. This one is not really much to see, okay? When I say brace, this, for the next four, five exercises after this one, four I guess, you're gonna to need to use this one, okay? So basically, put your hands on your stomach, just to sort of feel, and all it is is a tucking in of your belly, okay? Women are really good at this because we like to sort of suck in our bellies and make them look smaller. 
So that's all it is. Okay, I can do this talking. I can I can hold it for long periods of time. We're very sort of good at this. The other way I've heard it described is if you just sniff and the, the tenseness in your in your abdominal wall when you sniff, um, that is how, how tight you need to hold your your um, abdominals in. And like I was saying before, it creates a nice back belt and protective layer for you and holds your whole back in check. Okay, so that's a really good one for you as well to do. So that's bracing. The next ones I want you to do is called extensions. For this, I'm going to get on my hands and knees on this bed and hopefully the video can capture what I'm trying to show you. Okay, so hands and knees, you're on your hands and knees and what I want you to do is get your hair out of your face so you can look at the camera and then reach one arm out in front of you and the opposite leg, okay? One arm and the opposite leg and then the other arm and the opposite leg. But I want you to notice what happens. I'm just gonna do my legs, okay? Watch my back and, and look at the level of my back and how it's going. When I lift this leg, I can keep my back sort of like a tabletop without moving. If I do the other one, what happens when I don't think about it is I shift. Do you see what happened there? I shift and I, I moved all the way towards the camera. This one I'm sort of staying in, in space. That's telling me when I do this side that I have a weak muscle right here called the gluteus minimus, medius rather. And so what I want you to do is really think about firing that muscle and that way I can lift that part of me, that leg, without doing the shift and cheating. It's a way to cheat. So those are extensions, okay? Start just with the legs and then you can add the arms, opposite arms, if you want to later. You don't have to do that to begin with. Okay, exercise number one, two, three, four. Resisted sidestep. Not sure we can show you that one right now. Hmm. Okay, instead I'm going to show you the crunch. So next, what I want you to do is a crunch. Okay, I'm sure you've seen the crunch before, but I want you, I'm not sure if you can see me, let's see. I want you to put your hand, one hand behind your head and one hand on your belly, and knees are bent, okay? And then, you know, you've seen the crunch before. I do this just to man manage and, and measure what's going on. I want you to brace first and then pick your shoulders up off the floor, okay? That's it. One other key thing that never gets taught and makes it kind of wrong. Put your tongue on the roof of your mouth when you're doing it, like okay. a Why? Because it takes your neck muscles out. You can't, you can't yank on your neck to, to do this. And it makes you concentrate more on your abdominal muscles, which is what's important. Okay, so that's number, I've lost count. I don't remember. Um, I know there's two more. So side bridge. For this one, this is not good for people who have shoulder problems, okay? If you have a shoulder problem, this one is not for you. If you have shoulders that are just peachy keen, that's fine. So I want you to be on your arm with your elbow bent, and I'm, I'm using my elbow as to prop me up, and then my knees are bent like this, see? What I do here, maybe I'll point it this way, okay, brace and lift up off the ground and hold for a few seconds, and then come back down and then lift. Very protective for the low back again, okay? And our very last exercise is called resisted sidestepping. For this one, I have to stand up. So I'm gonna point you towards me standing, and I'm gonna cut off my head because I'd rather you see this part of me, okay? So what I want you to do is stand with your feet shoulder width apart. What you can't see is my feet right now because the bed's in the way. Point your toes towards each other, so you're pigeon-toed, and bend your knees slightly. And what I want you to do is take small steps to the side, okay? And you can, it's, it's for this muscle here that I told you was weak when I was doing the bird dog, okay? And you can do it, normally I would tell patients to put a band, an exercise band around their ankles, but you can do it actually without it. And the key here is not to waddle. When I say waddling, I mean people do this in order to cheat. So you wanna stay, keep your shoulders level, and sort of just slide across. It's engaging this muscle. Actually, even doing it a couple of times like that without resistance caused a little bit of burning in my gluteus medius muscle, which tells me I need to work on it a little bit. So these are major prevention and management exercises I give to lots of my low back patients. That plus chiropractic care keeps most people really, really healthy, okay? 
So at this point in my um, presentation, I usually ask the crowd if you have any questions or other painful conditions you want to ask me about other than low backs. I treat all of those things, you know. So chiropractors, yes, we are very well known for neck and back pain, but we treat other things too. N knee pain, do I do that? Yep. Um, shoulder pain, anything. If it hurts, that's something I can fix. Right now we're not in the clinic. Hopefully we are inching closer and closer to getting back into the clinic, hopefully for June or maybe July in Ontario, I don't really know. Um, whatever public health tells us we have to do, that is what we will do to keep everybody safe. Um, but if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out and ask me. My email is karen, K-A-R-E-N, Cairo, C-H-I-R-O, at hotmail.com. Karen Cairo at hotmail.com. You can always reach me and ask me any questions that you have. Um, and if you need anything during this time and like exercises or you're having an acute pain and you have um, an emergency case, we are as chiropractors allowed to see emergencies. Uh, we, we take that on a case by case basis so you can reach out for me and ask me about that too. I hope you guys are all keeping safe and healthy and I've really enjoyed making this video for you and hopefully um, this is good for you. Thanks so much. Take care.